Hi everyone, welcome to Thursday's English lesson. Make sure you have something to write with and something to write on so we can write down ideas and join in as we're going along the lesson. The learning objective today is to write a story with a beginning, middle and an end and the success criteria is to identify events in the story, explore using the story S and apply the changes into your story. So I want you to look at your story S from Tuesday's lesson if it's not in front of you, go and get it, put it in front of you so that you know what you're going to be doing in today's lesson. And I want you to pause the video and I want you to retell the story out loud using the story S. So I'm going to retell my story out loud using my story S. At the, begin at the beginning of my story there's Jill and Mum. And Jill is my new character instead of Jack. And mum tells Jill to sell the cow at the market. So Jill takes the cow to the market and finds an old man who wants to buy the cow. But instead of money, he gives her beans. So she runs home with the beans to show her mum. But her mum is not, is not happy at all. And she throws the beans outside. A little bit later on, Jill looks outside and sees a beanstalk is growing. And she's really happy. She says, yay, they are magic beans. And because Jill is really brave, she decides to climb up the beanstalk to see where it leads her. And her mum gets very worried and tells her to be careful. Jill climbs and climbs and climbs until she reaches the clouds. And when she gets to the top, she sees there's a castle. And Jill, because she's very adventurous, she goes inside the castle and she sees a big fat giant who has a magic hen that lays golden eggs. And the giant roars, fee, fi, fo, fum. And Jill also sees that he has a golden harp that plays beautiful music. The golden harp plays such beautiful music that it sends the giant to sleep. And Jill is able to take the golden harp and the golden eggs. She climbs down the beanstalk and the giant wakes up and tries to run after her, shouting, fee, fi, fo, fum. But Jill is too fast for him and manages to climb down. When she reaches the bottom of the beanstalk, she grabs a sharp axe and she chops the beanstalk down. And the story ends with Jill and Mum together happily with their golden harp and their golden eggs. And the beanstalk has been chopped down and is no more. In today's lesson, we are going to focus on the middle of our story. Because yesterday, we wrote the beginning. And now, today's lesson, we're going to write the middle of our story, which is the part that I have circled in red. So I want you to look at your story S and remind yourself about the middle of your story. So it's going to end where your character finds the giant with his golden harp. So pause the video now and remind yourself of that part of the story. Brilliant. So this is my middle part of the story that I have written. I want you to pause the video and I want you to read what I have written for my middle part for my story. Okay, I'm going to read the story out loud to you now. Jill woke early the next morning and stared in amazement out of her bedroom window. Where the beans had landed now stood a tall green beanstalk. She ran outside and started to climb. Her mother shouted at Jill to come back down, but she didn't listen. Be careful, Jill, she called. Jill wanted to see where the beanstalk took her. She climbed and climbed until she was in the clouds. Right at the top, she found a beautiful, ginormous castle. Jill was so excited and wanted to find out who lived inside. She ran towards the massive heavy door and pushed it open. In front of her, she saw two gigantic-sized feet belonging to a person that was sitting on a at a table as big as her own house. Jill saw a fat hen and three shiny golden eggs that the giant was counting. Those eggs looked like they could be worth a fortune, Jill thought to herself. If I take them, Mum and I would never have to be poor again. All of a sudden, she heard the giant hit the table with his massive fist and he roared, Fee, fi, fo, fum! He looked around the room as Jill hid behind the leg of a ginormous-sized chair. She looked around the room and saw a beautiful magic harp on the table next to where the hen was standing. What a lovely harp. 
I wish I could have that. I could play it all day long, thought Jill. If you listen to my story and you read my story, you can see I've included adjectives to describe lots of things to add to make the writing a bit more interesting and exciting. So make sure when you're writing your middle part of the story that you're including your adjectives. And also remember to be including your capital letters and your full stops like we learned about yesterday in the lesson yesterday. So today we're going to be focusing on using the suffix ed. So I'm going to show you some of them now. Snatch turns into snatched. Jump turns into jumped. Whale turns into whaled. A suffix is always at the end of a what doing verb. The suffix ed shows the regular past tense and it has already happened. So I want you to look through again the middle part of my story that I wrote and I want you to identify where the past tense is used. So look for the ed words and I want you to write down on your paper any ed words, so words end in ed, that I used for my part of the story. Brilliant, well done. I have highlighted in red the words that I have used end in ed. So these are all past tense words I've used. So I've used stared, landed, started, shouted. You can tick these if you've written any of these down. Called, wanted, climbed, excited, wanted, some of them are repeated, lived, pushed, roared and looked. Well done if you got those. And there's another look there too. Some of them might be repeated, but well done if you got those words. Fantastic. They all end in ed and they're past tense because our story is written in the past tense. It's already happened. So the suffix ed, snatched, jumped, wailed. Here are some examples again. A suffix is always at the end of a what doing verb. The suffix ed shows the regular past tense. It has already happened. Now I would like you to tick the sentences that are correct and fix the sentences that are not correct. So you can write this down on your paper. The first one is the giant lived in a massive castle. The second sentence says Poppy played with her ball outside. And the last sentence is Mr Bear walked outside to the garden and looked around. Are they correct? If they are not correct, I want you to write them on your paper and fix them please. So pause the video and do that now. Well done. The first sentence is correct. Great work. And the second and third sentence were incorrect. Played should look like this. And walked. I think in the first one we, it said walk, but it should be walked. And looked should look like this. So the ed needs to go on the end of the verb. Fantastic. Well done for getting those. Remember, a suffix is always at the end of a what doing verb. The suffix ed shows the regular past tense. It's already happened. So you're going to write the middle of your story today. Yesterday you wrote the beginning, so now you're carrying on. So read through what you wrote yesterday. Read up to where you ended. And then today you're going to carry on from where your character discovers that a beanstalk is growing and you're going to end where the giant where your character discovers that the giant has a golden harp don't write the end of the story yet that's going to be for tomorrow's lesson so only go up to the part that i have circled before you go we have a challenge spot the mistakes in my sentences the first sentence is mr bear could not sleep he was fed up the second sentence is, Poppy was angry with the frog, so she opened the window and threw him outside. And the last sentence is, where's my teddy, shout the big bear. I think there's some mistakes in those sentences. Could you write the sentences down and fix them for me, please? Pause the video and do that now. Well done. These were the mistakes. There was quite a few. The first one... There was capital letters missing and Mr and Bear because it's his name. And he should be a capital letter because it's the first word after a full stop. 
With the second sentence, Poppy should have been a capital letter because it's her name. And opened needs to have the e suffix ed on the end because it's a past tense verb. And it should have been threw him outside because that's the past tense of throw. With the third sentence, where's should have been a capital W for where's because it's the first word in the sentence. There should have been a question mark because it's a question. Where's my teddy? He's asking a question. He needs to have an answer for it. And shouted. There needs to be the suffix ed because it's the past tense verb of shout. Brilliant work. Well done for today, year one. I can't wait to read the beginning and the middle of your story now. So remember to use your story yes to help you. And don't go too far. Don't do the ending yet. Just up to the middle. Bye.